going on there, YouTube? I had to get on the ramp truck. I'm all about the ramp truck lately. Um, I did some brainstorming on the chassis. I'm trying to find alternative ways that are going to save me some time because I don't have the best setup for welding and fabricating. I can do quite a bit of it, but I really don't have the, the space and the right kind of equipment to do the things that I was dreaming of doing on this. So I'm getting creative here. I'm looking at the front end today. I, these are one inch C channel. This is the smallest C channel I can find anywhere. And I'm worried about the weight on this and these are super heavy, but I'm going alternative routes with the ends of the frame. So what I've got here on the front, these are pieces. If you remember way back to the very first rat rod I built, the 32 Roadster, I used a vintage nylon road grader frame to make the step in the rear for the suspension. And that's what I'm going to do here as well. This time it was a vintage Tonka road grader and I cut these off and cut them down. It's nice old solid steel. I think that's from the mid to late 50s. And uh, hoping I don't have any problems welding it to this thicker C channel, but we're gonna make it work. This gives me the perfect step in the front and gives me a lot of locations where I can mount the suspension and the air struts and things. Um, I've got it mocked up here. That, that, that stuff is pretty lightweight and I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do on the rear but I'm, I may even go as far as switching to aluminum for the back half of the frame. This will keep the center solid, square and heavy. Um, I cut those two pieces of the one inch and I've just drilled some random holes in it right now. I clamped them together and drilled four holes so I'm using some RC four-wheel drive Trailfinder 2 chassis links. I think those are the rear shock mounts or something that are the same length just to just to keep it upright and square. And uh, yeah, that way I can still take it apart, weld each front half on, bolt it back together, make sure everything's square and, and jiving right. But um, I think this is going to work. <laughs> it goes right over and it sits on the suspension arms or the uh, sorry the steering links. And I've got a cross member cut for the front. So I'm going to weld in as well. And yeah, I'm going to try to keep the frame rails where I can split them and not have it, you know, not weld cross members in here yet until the end. That way, if I get to the rear suspension and I need to make sure all my screw holes and stuff for the suspension are exactly even from side to side, I can take these two cross members out, clamp these together, and then I can drill everything that way and uh, through both pieces at the same time and make sure they're identical because that, that was one of the issues I've had doing scratch built chassis is if you weld the sides separately and then start worrying about the suspension you're going to have a hard time getting all the holes even from side to side and then your axle will be crooked in the rear and you know stuff like that so um so yeah like I said this these vintage parts here are, are thinner metal I'm trying to decide if I need to weld in some flat stock on the inside to strengthen the joint from the inside. I think I'm actually out right now. So I'm trying to find something I can use for that. Um, I've got to clean the inside of the rails for welding. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get the uh, front suspension hanging out on its own today. That would be pretty cool. Alright guys, so uh, got the front frame step welded in. 
Uh, I've went ahead and mounted the radius arms pretty close to the right length. I'm going to have to adjust them when we add the cantilever links for the shocks. But I'm pretty happy with how this is coming out so far. It's going to give me the right angles and everything as the suspension travels up and down. And uh, I didn't have a hard time like I thought I would welding that thinner steel to the thick steel. And luckily I didn't blow through but a couple times so it's all working out. Um, yeah, this thing is, I think I use 59 millimeter links and long ang offset steering or uh, link rods, rod ends. And um, yeah, it's going to give me good range of motion without jacking with the steering angle a whole lot. I do plan on welding a front cross member in. Like I said, I've already got one cut, but I'm going to wait until we get the rear underway for that. Um, I did get my steel ready here for the grill. <clears throat> I mentioned in the last video I made this mesh out of an old trash can and I sanded it lightly and put it to the rusting. It's got a little little rust on it. Not too bad but it fits nicely behind the grill. We'll put that in here in a minute. Um, so as far as the suspension mounts I haven't decided yet how all that's going to work. I want to get the rear, like I said, I gotta get the rear of the frame done and welded and then we can actually weld the halves of the frame together and make this thing a whole lot more rigid. I just got it bolted temporarily. But everything's jiving, everything's lining up right and it's going to lay out perfectly. Here's a better look at the front end. Um, they're not perfectly straight because none of this is perfectly straight. I've got it just bolted together so there is some play in it. But like I said I want to keep everything separate, both halves of the chassis separate until I've got everything on and ready and I'm going to weld cross members in. And when that time comes I will clamp it to something. I'm not sure yet because this is bigger than my workspace. But uh, we'll find something big to clamp it to. Something solid that we can weld on. I need a welding table. I need a nice solid welding table. But uh, something to clamp it down and keep it square as we weld in all the uh, cross members. I've tried to brainstorm transmissions. The only transmission I have not in a vehicle right now is the old RC four-wheel drive R2, I think. And it doesn't fit very well in any way, shape, or form. So I don't know, and I don't know how far back I want to do it. Um, the Pro Air RC control box is pretty good size. So it's either going to need to be behind, under the bed here, or inside the cab. And yeah, that's going to play into where and what kind of transmission we use. Uh, really not concerned about speed on this. This isn't, you know, our rat rods already aren't very fast. They're, a couple of farm trucks pretty quick, but it's not about the speed. And with this just hauling them around, I'm not trying to go fast at all. So something like this is geared pretty low. It would be plenty. You know, we're going to need more torque because of the weight. But um, I'm still brainstorming ideas here for the rear suspension. I went heavy on the steel frame, so I'm thinking aluminum for the back. Um, I'm thinking though, instead of having a frame step over the rear end like a typical step notch, go over, back, and then out, I'm thinking I'm just going to weld some uprights on here, mount all my suspension off of that, and then I'm going to use aluminum. And I don't have any aluminum angle, but I'm going to screw mount aluminum angle iron, and that will bolt to the bed and support it and I can have a welded mount here in the front so it'll be mounted to the chassis in, in four solid places it will give us a point for our uh, to mount our cantilever system for the air shocks and it'll also support the bed floor and hold the weight of the truck uh, like I said I won't be using a flat stock it will be aluminum angle and I think that'll keep the weight down enough on this the front end come out very lightweight um, some of the ideas I had at first were horrendous <laughs> but uh yeah let's keep on going here Alright guys, so uh, with this kind of thing 
the simplest way is usually the best way. I cut some uprights that are inch and a half long. I've cut roughly the angle I need here for the uh, ramp bed. I didn't really measure it, but I'm pretty good at eyeballing. It looks looks pretty good. So, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use aluminum to do the structure for the inside of the ramp, and this is going to be the extent of the welding of the frame. I am going to weld a piece across the top of here as well as other cross members through here as we get further along but this is going to provide me I'm gonna to have to lengthen my my uh, suspension mounts my links here but I'm gonna to mount to the hole that I've already drilled that's even from side to side and then our upper mounts our upper four link mounts will be attached to those uprights and then for the top of that upright I'm gonna mount the angled aluminum that's going to hold the ramp bed in place so the next step is to take the frame back apart in halves and weld those on the end. And with this, you got to take each weld at a time. I'm trying to, since I'm doing this different, I'm not splitting, making the frame as one piece and then splitting it. So I'm going to have to do each one and spend a little time bracing it and getting it square and then getting it welded on so they stay even. But I'm not that worried about that. I think the next step on this is going to be taking those two pieces I just cut and clamping them together and drilling a hole all the way through to mount the uh, upper link mounts because they need to be part of having a triangulated four link. Everything needs to be equal length and you know I can't have one off a little bit from one side to the other. So that's going to be important to have that even from side to side as well. So uh, yeah. Let me just look at where the height is going to be. And so we want our rods angled down similarly. So it's looking like our mounts are going to be a little closer to the bottom than they are at the top. That way when it's aired up, they'll be almost parallel with the chassis rail, depending on how high we raise it. And then that way also, because I don't have the body attached yet, and I, the way the fender wheel is on the body, I need to keep the tire centered. I don't want it too far forward, or too far back, it won't look right. So this is gonna allow us adjustability with that. So depending on how we mount the body to the frame and get everything lined up in the front, we can adjust it with shims on the link rods on the back. <clears throat> and we can get the wheelbase exactly where we need it. And then the last step on all that will be to actually drill holes and mount the bed to the structure of aluminum that we haven't built yet. Alright guys, so this is where I'm going to wrap it up. I've got my uprights welded on the axle. I've roughed in a four link. The angles and stuff are not right. The upper uh, the upper links are... I need different ends. Those heim joints do not angle enough to go far enough out, so I had to space these out quite a bit. And it is blocking where your input shaft is for the drive shaft. But I just wanted to get it out there and get an idea of where I'm at. Um, it does need to be a little bit longer of a four link. My wheelbase is off probably five millimeter. But uh, that's easy, easily adjusted. So I'm not worried about that. I just wanted to get it as sort of a roller. And again, the, both rails are just bolted together and can easily come apart so we can fine tune or weld or whatever else we gotta do to them. But uh, I'm, I'm starting to really, it, I know this video may not have made a whole lot of actual physical progress, but I made a whole lot of progress as far as planning. Now I've got a basis to understand more where my suspension is going to go, how everything's going to mount. Um, I'm already kind of thinking about body mounts. Um, the bed, that's the biggest thing is I, I needed structure under the bed. And going with aluminum I think is going to 
going to really save us a lot of weight because this chassis is not terribly heavy. That half inch C channel or that one inch C channel is, is pretty stout, but it's all low and it's only about a foot of it. So we're probably with the axles, maybe pound, maybe. So I'm not super worried about that anymore. Um, I've got, I probably will weld on here once we start doing the cross members, but once I've figured out how I'm going to mount the bed, and I've got to get some more aluminum and stuff, so the next part will be chassis part two, I'm, I'm guessing, um, <laughs> unless I decide to go ahead and do the bed floor, but, because that's going to kind of incorporate with how the bed mounts, I think, but I'm digging it, and uh, yeah, I think it's it's finally starting to come together. I think we're only a couple videos away from getting that Pro Air RC kit back out and starting to see how it's all going to fit together. Here's how that grill came out. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I got the mesh behind it now. Not sure yet what we're going to do about headlights. I'm going to have to look find some lenses and stuff that might fit that. It's going to be a challenge because these are roughly... Oh... 11 or 12 millimeter. So I'll have to find some 12 millimeter lenses that look somewhat scale. But uh, anyway, let's get back to the chassis. Here's a better look at the rear end. Like, like I said, the uh, these heim joints from RC four wheel drive, they're pretty much maxed out that far apart. So I am gonna, I do want to get these spacers completely gone. So I'll probably end up using plastic uh, rod ends for the top, and I need to get the pinion angle. It's not bad. It's actually, I mean, it stays perfect for the full range of motion, but it does interfere with that. So we do need to get a different thing going on up there. Plus we need to add five mils to the length. Um, when I did it, I did it from about there and the wheelbase is pretty spot on, but when it's laid out, the tires are sitting on the front of the bed. So we got to find that happy balance between where the ride height's actually going to be and, uh, how it looks laid out but probably going to weld flat plate across here and then we'll mount aluminum to be the structure the floor of the bed and we'll have some other bracing from the front and that'll probably be it it'll be four points keeping the bed held on and up and the weight of whatever rat rod we're hauling around it's very expensive for her in we've got a yoda 2 with a cover these heim joints are are not cheap and we got the vanquish wheels that's one thing I want to touch on. The last video, I know the tires are on backwards, guys. You don't have to keep commenting about the tires. Some of the tires are the angles and stuff. It, I know they, these are buggy tires and they have a blue paint mark on there. And I just put them on the inside when I got it because I don't want to see blue paint on my sidewalls. So yeah, once this is all done, you're not going to see the tread. So it's not going to be a big deal. I'm not worried about it. I know it's there. I appreciate y'all looking out for me, but... It's cool. No big deal. But uh, anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up. Let me know what you guys think. And be sure to like, subscribe, and share. And check out the links in the video description for Pro Air RC and Nightcrawler's 3D if you're interested in this body or any of his other rat rod bodies. And uh, yeah, keep it scale. I'll see you on the next video.